I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Right behind Mr. Whitman is uh, the access road off of Washington Street, which you can see in gray that Kevin is pointing to. <clears throat> uh, the first building as you come in on the right is a garage office building. Um, that's located entirely in the Business B District. Um, this is a yeah. Uh, Kevin, can you just point out the, the district boundary lines? Yeah, so uh, Business B. That's is, the uh, is furthest extent of the Business here, B yeah, district. Yep. Residence A is beyond that. Residential commercial is here to this property line. Right. And then the uh, and then the, the lower line is historic. historic. So then uh, to the right of the uh, garage office building is uh, our two small buildings. Uh, this, the building there is an outdoor uh, wood furnace, which is going to power the property, uh, burning the wood waste and wood recycled. The other one's a dumpster location. The other is the dumpster. Okay. That's for, for heat only, not 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 electricity. Okay. Yeah, so it's a yeah. it's a furnace building. Yeah. <coughs> and furthest to the south is a six bay um, garage associated with the equipment for the property, and uh, to the extent you can call it a structure on the northerly side of the property, there are some uh, materials bins um, where you would put uh, finished product, which could be purchased and um, taken from the property. Um, the use is connected in part with uh, the Smith's 14-acre uh, farm at 24 Pine Mill Drive. Um, they have another property on Mattachusa Street al already. Um, all of the products uh, that are going to be created here, which would include mulch, firewood, and biomass product. Uh, biomass meaning something that could be used to power um, a, a wood stove, um, other type of wood product are all intended to be kept on the property for a temporary period of time. They're not going to be composted. Um, and the significance of that is, generally speaking, all of the product that's on this property will leave every year. And, and there is a significant difference between composting and this um, wood recycling facility. Um, the proposed hours of the business are Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. or dusk, Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., Sunday, materials and pickup delivery only, no processing of materials. Uh, just in terms of the use of in and of itself, and then I'll have Kevin or, or Dan say a few words. Um, the if you view this as a, even if you view this as a light industrial activity, the use would be permitted by right in the business B district and the residential commercial district. Um, we believe it has, uh, is properly classified as an agricultural use because of the, um, the clean wood reprocessing. Um, they're not gonna take in any type of uh, C and D material, which would be construction debris. None of that. O only organic wood products, only for the purposes of being um, converted into biomass, some mulch, and um, firewood. Um, a, a portion of the product, to talk about harvesting from the site, but a portion of the product also coming from Pine uh, Mill Drive, um, and obviously a portion of the material would come in from elsewhere. Uh, there's a truck traffic, or there's a traffic impact study that we've already submitted. Um, uh, we think this is a, a, a far more appropriate location than the other locations where Dan uh, conducts his business. Um, this is uh, intended to be um, 
a facility where someone could actually come into the site and purchase either on a wholesale or a retail basis the products of the facility. Um, uh, but uh, chiefly, this is a place where um, uh, people could come in and uh, purchase the products of this particular facility. <coughs> um, the intention is to limit the product processing to the daylight hours, um, further limit them on Saturdays and none on Sundays, and I assume that would be holidays as well, right? Right, Dan? So, Kevin, could you probably go through the one? Do you want to say anything else, Dan? I think you've covered it all. Okay. Yep. We had just thought that you might want to yep. say some stuff. That's okay. Um, see, we, we prepared the site plan. Um, Peter Palmieri has uh, reviewed and uh, provided comments. I'm going through those currently. I have almost all of them done. Um, just didn't get it together for tonight. Um, all of them seem to be items that we can address pretty easily. Um, the uh, entrance roadway is going to stay in approximately the same location as it is now. I'm going to do a slight reconfigure for the trucks maneuvering in and out. We're looking for a 40-foot radius here going to the north. We have a 30-footer going to the south where they cross the lane. That's going to give them plenty of maneuverability. The roadway width here is 24 feet. Um, where we have a nice wide opening here, we'd like to keep this lane for this single lane here. I believe we have it at uh, 15 feet wide. So when we're coming south, when the trucks are coming south, they can <coughs> enter here without uh, having to make this turn around this utility pole. It's an existing utility pole right there. So we'd like to keep an island there and and make this turn here. If they need to, they could make this 30 foot radius and, and turn in here. But this is an easier maneuver. Um, we have a 30 foot access drive in here. Um, we will have trucks coming in and out, so give them plenty of space. Um, there's a turnout lane here for temporary parking, Dan, I believe, for, for the truck. Oh, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Um, so, automobile vehicles that are coming to the office area um, can pull in here. We have, uh, I think, seven spaces right there. Sorry to have them numbered here. So there's parking in this location here. I don't know the number sure there. I believe there's seven. Um, there's parking on this side of the building as well for employees right here. Um, and then we have four bays, four, four truck bays here. There's another truck bay located to the side here. So the trucks can come in, make this maneuver, and pull in this location. Uh, should they be accessing the rear building that comes straight through out to these one, two, three, one, two, three, six bays um, they can spin around and back into here there's automobile parking in, in this location here so there's a there's an access drive um, located here that they can come in and, and park in these locations it's also a wash bay right here for the trucks um, the trucks will come around and enter here, get washed, and come through. The uh, uh, Dan is looking at doing a, an evaporator system for the water uh, that's used for washing the trucks, so we won't need an underground storage tank that will be burned off. Um, pretty slick system they have there. did not provide a lighting plan for the original application. We have prepared one, which I will be giving to you for the next, uh, for Peter's next review. Uh, mostly wall units, um, and we'll have, I believe, looking at a, an outdoor light here and another one at, at the entrance. Um, but mostly just wall lighting, very light 
Um, as we said, we're not going to be working at night there, so we'll just need lights for our office use and whoever happens to be working late with Dan can see their cars and get out. Um, there's utilities available, water, electric, and gas. Um, sheets. So we're looking at doing underground electric off of this utility pole here in the front. Come back to a transformer, which will then uh, feed the two buildings. Um, gas is available as well, and we are proposing a water main uh, in this location right about here. Water main will be coming here, and it will split off and head back to service this building. I believe we have a 6-inch water main coming off a 16-inch, 15 or 16-inch main here. We're also going to be providing uh, fire suppression and uh, there'll be a fire hydrant located approximately here um, near the furnace building. Um, I prepared um, stormwater calculations that have been reviewed. Um, we're basically providing infiltration basins in uh, two areas. There's an infiltration basin located here and there's another one located here. Their pretreatment is done by sediment four bays um, and or catch basins. In this location here we have a sediment four bay that will be built into this island here so it's <coughs> basically sunk down about a foot and a half. Overland flow will go into that um, four bay and it will overflow through a catch basin before discharging into the uh, down, down gradient uh, area. Uh, so sediment will be trapped in this location be cleaned prior to discharge here. Um, in this location here we have a subsurface infiltration system. We have three catch basins right now. Um, so overland flow from here and there's a high point in here on the topography right now. We'll enter these three catch basins, go into the uh, concrete uh, chamber system and then that will overflow out to the down gradient land here. Um, I've, I've looked at the comments and that scenario is, we're gonna have that basic, that's basic that, basically that scenario with some modification. So we're utilizing, we're sp spreading the infiltration out around the site. Uh, we're not concentrating it all in one area. Uh, it's gonna be pre-treated and uh, meet the stormwater regulations. Um, I guess that's, that's basically it. You have to take any questions? I want to say a couple other things on the uh, So on Thursday night, um, Dan and Kevin have a meeting with the Historic District Commission. Um, they have not yet filed an application for a certificate of appropriateness, which is what the Historic District Commission would approve. Um, as is my practice, you typically meet with the Historic District Commission in advance, uh, give them your renderings and we'll allow them to take a look at the site because they have their own ideas, maybe in even independent of yours, as to setbacks and <coughs> colors and designs of buildings. Um, so it's likely before we come back for a further hearing, we will have had more input and filed our application with the Historic District Commission and uh, we may have some changes, but uh, hopefully the layout looks very similar to what you see here when you site plan. Um, other thing I wanted to mention, a clean wood facility like this does not require any type of site assignment from the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, um, a greedy consultant was in touch with DEP to confirm site assignment regulations and whether this would be treated as, as some type of a um, a waste facility and I'm just reading you from an email, a clean wood facility can be operated without any permits from the DEP provided the owner and the operator uh, incorporate best management practices that prevents an unpermitted discharge of pollutants to the air, water, or other natural resources of the Commonwealth. So, um, and that's under 310 CMR 16. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And, um, 
Am I right in reading this from this distance that there's nothing going on in the middle there, or is that where? That's, par that's parking and access area. The okay. gray area is what yeah, you're speaking about? Yeah, the gray, sort of right in the middle of all of that. that will there be mulch piles? Will there be? Storage and mulch is on No, it'll be it. to the rear, to storage mm -hmm. only. The rear, okay. the gray area is parking and access area, right, Kevin? Yes. Mm -hmm. and anything else you? Yeah, th <coughs> there's a lot of um, cleanup and reconstruction to be done in that back green area, so we're going to kind of try and pick away at that as we as we as we can. Um, there's not like pollutants there, but there's lots of the site. You know, is historically a, a mulch manufacturing. Um, they left debris, buried debris there. We did 17 test holes. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but there are stumps and logs. Um, he's the perfect candidate to go in there and sift through that and process it into usable material, mulch, etc. Um, there is some construction debris. I did see a couple of chunks of concrete, but he can process that as well. Process it or get rid, cr of it? get rid of it, crush it, but not through his, not as part of the. Uh, that would just right. be a cleanup. Yeah. yeah. And then it has nothing to do with the continuing operation. I'm trying to look at the map here in my on my phone. So putting brook sort of runs along the western edge of that property or the I don't know if that's the west, the left side of the property. Um north side. Yeah north, north side of the property. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um how far out are we in terms of wetlands and sort of <coughs> sure. and river? Yeah. I can't I can't I have no idea. Sure. How Let's far that down. is mm -hmm. uh, of course those lines didn't show up on that plan and um the one hundred foot buffer zone Mm -hmm. is is right here. Maybe if I can get it on the next sheet with the building on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the one hundred foot buffer zone is right here. And then on the left side it goes to um right through here. So um the building is outside the buffer zone from the pudding. So the brook. storage would be in it? Um yes the storage. So that's contained in 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 bays. Um, concrete. Yeah. Bins. Concrete concrete bins. <coughs> so that would be conservation we have to look Yes, we have viable conservation. Yeah. You have? We yeah. have. Okay. Now what about the uh, noise factor? How noisy is this facility? It's, so it's, uh, it's it's intermittent. It's it's not that so currently we do this whole process out behind Copeland Lumber and Marshfield. Okay. And you know we've been doing it for for mm -hmm. two years straight out there. It's 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 not bad. Um, I, I do think you know you guys will hear the the grinder when it's it's grinding, but I, I don't it's not think bad. It, you live near it. Well, I work around it every single day. No, you know, I live so, no, no. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Who was that over there speaking? Do I have Mark some Hall. names on the record? Danielle and Donald Mark Hall. Mark up and what Mark is your Hall. And Mark Hall. Mark Hall. And your address? 416 Washington mm -hmm. Street. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Before we take questions. Um, so is that front area, I know now it's kind of <coughs> rounded up on the street, is that going to be like brought down, is that lawn? Yes, he wants to remove that and make it lawn. Pretty much uh, to mirror what he wants to do here. Yeah. Flagpole, planting air, but mostly, uh, you know, a farm look. You want to bring that up so we can see? Sure. Thanks. This is a frame for you. I know, I should have brought it. Oh, jeez. Um, so, looking for a farmhouse type look. <coughs> um, not a, a lot of, uh, th they want to do a nice looking building with masonry uh, foundation under it and, you know, make it a nice aesthetic building. Y you know this company, they like their trucks clean, they like their yard clean, they, they this is the look they, they want. Um, so they're gonna, they they want to remove that berm out front and uh, make it look like this. Are you prepared to provide a building elevation, drawing, etc.? Uh, we do have them, yes. Yeah. So have these been submitted or are we going to I thought we had submitted them. I think they're in the I'm not if we have, do you want them on the stand? No, sure. would you like to see them up here? <laughs> we put them on the table then. Yeah, sure. Lay it on top of the 
Yeah, just be careful about the. Um, yeah, he's just amazing later on. I wasn't about the cookies, I was talking about the recording, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they go to the Two separate ones, which was the main one. Yeah, and so this is the one that I'm going to the front of the back. I'm going to see from the street. I know. I'm going to have to go through with your uh, behind over here. But now, where is the actual processing happening? Is it happening in the main building, in the middle? Out, out in the back section. Oh, on the land, not Correct. in the Correct. In the industrial, yes. in the industrial crop. This little spot they have behind that process building is where they, looks like they're going to put it. Yeah. When we have something up, we... Yeah, I think it's up in here. Yep, so the processing, the screener is located here. Okay, so in terms of noise, I'm also looking how that relates to other property owners and I have a map here it looks like there's a lot of open space behind you sort of on the east it's the furthest it's the furthest yeah it's the furthest point from from, uh, from the houses street. on Pleasant oh. Street <coughs> Pleasant. but on Washington Street we're going to have it backs up to it looks like you almost go over to where what Gardner's Choice is mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh And are there here. homeowners on the front there? What mm -hmm. are those? There's one. one there. There. It's one. No. Oh. Right one. Four hundred Washington Street. Oh, that's you guys? That's me. Okay, that's you? Okay. And, and I'm 408 Washington Street, the partner's choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the uh, building elevation here for you. So well, that's the back of the yeah. elevator. Oh. That's that's the back of the front building. Back of the front building, right? Let me take the Yeah. Can we just hold that for you? Okay, hold that. Same. Next next time. They must have an official stapler at this place. Yeah. We got a few sheets to see. So, so Kevin, just explain the front, the front view. Sure. So Washington Street would be on the far side of the building. Yep, the other side. So you'd have to come all the way around to see the bays here. Mm -hmm. So this is the rear elevation of the front building. Uh, there's the floor plan, uh, lobby, a couple of offices, utility room, storage room, and what's in the wide open bathrooms. So this it's is all where the trucks, trucks are vehicles, and equipment. vehicles, yeah. vehicles, yeah. <coughs> vehicles and equipment. That's the clean room. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the second floor, open to the lobby below, conference room, office, and storage. Are those facing Washington Street? That is facing Pudding Brook <laughs> here. <coughs> Washington facing Street is north. here. And this is the real floor. So are the windows and the um, drawings right. on Washington Street, are they kind of just a decoration? Or are they uh, no, they're going to bring light in? Yeah. Okay. And we haven't nailed down the exact window we want. We're trying to do a more residential type window as opposed to the commercial. The stables are killing you, huh? <laughs> Thank you. This is just a blow up of the uh waffle sorry. Yep.
Second floor, same thing. Roof. Looks like they have an ridge in the middle. You put more pitch on it than a conventional building too, because I kind of like the look of that. No cupola? <laughs> Uh, we've been down this road. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's the front. That's the front elevation, right? Yeah, that's what you yeah. see from the street. That's left here. So, um, but you were talking about changing those windows around, or yeah, so it's more like this picture here, something like that. Mm -hmm. Classier looking. We want to do real stone masonry on the bottom, uh, four feet. So, and on the. Uh, North elevation or the left as you're facing it. This is the main entrance for the office. Parking spaces will be right here. Um, main door. Here's the uh, south elevation on the other gable end. Um, parking spaces here. Garage entry there. Um, and again, the rear elevation. And then we just have details. We want to do like that entrance, we want to do like a real post and beam structure, so it kind of brings in that whole wood <coughs> thing. And that's probably not detailed. Is that detailed? Yeah, I don't really. Do you have the other building coming? Yeah, I think that's that staple will remove her back though before I close this guy. So that's the rear elevation. Yeah. So uh, bay number one was the washroom, uh, and then five other bays, front entrance, rear. So here's the front elevation. Um, I think we're going to replace these windows with pass doors and glass in them too. So similar to the other building, uh, is the color and the... Color's going to be exactly the same. Um, I don't think we're going to do the, the real masonry around the whole bottom of that one. Since it's out back and right. really out of public We might view. put those foam inserts in there. That building be within public view, essentially being back in that location. Not really. No. You'd have to pull it be, the site. be, you know, shielded with landscaping. I noticed on Merrill from OK, I haven't seen any kind of landscape plan. I have prepared one now, and I didn't quite get all the comments done, so I didn't want to bring half in for you. Yeah, we need to take that out the future meeting or whatever. Um, in general, yeah, right. 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 Uh, separate yeah. uh, space yeah. for yeah. access, yeah. yeah. Uh, we may rent a couple of them to people oh. in similar use. Like landscapers that we work with. Right. So we talking about actually Possibly renting out some of these units in the back. Renting them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like those places up on further down in Washington. And putting the putting up there. So they'd be rented out to guys get the or, or people of that of that nature. Mm -hmm. One of these is a wash bay, correct? Yes. Drive in, drive out. Just for our own stuff, our own truck. Yeah, no public uh, yeah. rent these units where they would be parked. Out and back is all behind Either the building. In or in front of the doors and in back. That's funny. We're not going to have, uh, do they have a lofts in each one of those bays? That's no, not the intention now. We'll have that room. Uh, so, yeah, half baths in each one. They're not showing any office area, if you will, or anything like that. They're just showing like a list of it. How high is the building, though? 
It's a single story. Um, Soft, that's a 20. Yeah, 31 8 to the ridge. So they have an <coughs> elevated foundation, like similar to the one in the front. Mm -hmm. I just get a little concerned right now, reasoning because, oh, you know, some of those uh, the facility that we have down on Washington Street, Friday night, sometimes you get a lot of kind of clutter that ends up getting outside the, the VC space. Mm. I'm, I'm very <laughs> anti-clutter. <laughs> There's a trash collection. It was like a, uh, is it separate? There's issues in there, but we don't need to go too far. That's an Tedeschi property. 242 Washington Street. That's right. I don't like to name names, but Washington Street. back to your landscape question. Um, Dan would like to keep the landscape simple. It's going to be um, like to do something very plain like we're showing. But, um, we want to keep a perimeter of existing vegetation. He wants a lawn view so we can see his uh, building here. This building's difficult to break up uh, from these two sides for access reasons because we have bays here and parking here again though we do have this is uh, 99 feet to this building most of that is going to remain uh, woods um, this is a drainage basin otherwise we're leaving that as woodland and you, a lot of green the place. I think what trying to you got it uh, we do river channel there, and I do think in you know, respect the, you know, respect the uh, distance, shall we say, with any of the developing in the back. Um, and is that cur curve back, I believe that stream is going to now take a hard cur curve to the, to the right on your map. Um, yeah, coming around yeah, there. Yeah, I guess it does this. Um, Goes up I further I and further <coughs> east. I'll have to look into that. I, I didn't, I don't have this. I think that's way out to the hooks around. Out. Yeah, yeah, I don't recall seeing it Maybe come in there. Yeah, yeah, like I, the I stripped map, off my lead bit sheet. Where that stream I, actually is taking that tree. <coughs> just to make sure that, you know, there isn't any. I mentioned piles being kept on that light green area. Um, here, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to keep a bit of a burn and, and slope everything in this direction toward the the drainage. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be going back into the water. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. Keep this berm to keep that from happening. Mm. So right now I'm looking at the map, and there's a hole sort of like a area, and then there's this between, so how, as put into a cut behind the property. Are you guys clearing any of those woods, or are you working within kind of the area that's already cleared? Um, yeah, we're working primarily in the cleared area. Um, so I think that would answer some of them. Um, <coughs> so, the, the existing tree line, the highlighter, is is here. It's, it's basically 100% cleared on this side. Um, the driveway that's existing uh, and it's clear to the north of that a bit um, and then so we're maintaining that existing tree line we're showing some plantings in here so the existing woods is actually behind what I'm showing for proposed tree line mm -hmm. this area here we are clearing the, the existing woods is right here and we're looking to clear this for this access to the wash bay and the drainage facility. And is that his choice to the right of that? Yeah, or right here. Yeah. It's a residence in front Yeah, residence there. And residential commercial district. Is, 
Have you had any complaints over in Nashville about your grinding? No. 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 It's the, it's the, actually, it's the PMUD in Industrial District. Is you know where WAPD is located? Yeah. Off of, that's Enterprise Drive. Yeah. Um, <coughs> that property abuts the Copeland property to the rear. That's where they're going to build a 240 um, big, just permitted about a month ago. That's good. No green residential, the same company that built the property. That's the successful company. Grandma Pro was the original. Dave has been our neighbor. We screen and do a lot of similar stuff in the center on a smaller scale. He's a good neighbor. He keeps everything nice and neat. I have no complaints with him. I hate to say no. So, Peter. Being serious. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask because I'm reading your comments in here about the part of that building being residence A. Um, well, part of the part of the project, excuse me, residence A district is is this area here, um, and I guess what what I was saying in my letter was, and Bob Galvin addressed it, um, that they consider this light manufacturing, which isn't allowed use, but um, the board has to determine whether they agree with that. It, it wouldn't be permitted light industrial use if we were taking in trash or refuse or things like that. That's specifically excluded. But this is not trash or refuse or things of the, uh, construction debris, any of that stuff. It's all organic. But, I mean, how far does the, the building sort of intrude into the residential area? It doesn't at all. Oh. Actually, the buildings are located entirely in the Business B district or the residential commercial district. There's no portion of the buildings. Well, the, the, I, I, another comment in the letter was that, if, and I guess this is something the planning board has to consider, is that there is a limit on how far this use can extend into the um, residential zone. 30 feet. Um, I'm sorry? 30, 30 feet. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know whether this pavement, whether it's associated with this use or this use, um, I don't know if this is this. I don't think would be considered light manufacturing. Um, I don't know. I think that's a subject for discussion. I think the buildings are incidental to the principal use, which is the wood processing, organic, clean wood processing. Uh, yeah, but you're yeah. Aren't you setting up uh, basically uh, rental property in the back there, and you don't necessarily I, know who's going to be in there? Uh, I don't think it's exclusively. It's only a couple of days, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. But they're all divided. They are well, divided. Well, we, yeah, honestly, shown we, on the yeah, we might have. I don't think it's going to be that divided. We can only we can only yeah. comment on what we see. Correct. I, I think he's referring to all the doors. The right. doors and the, the wall would be divided. The walls. Yeah. So we are running low in time. Does the board mind if I ask if there are any further comments from the public? Absolutely. Before we perhaps adjourn the meeting to another date sure. in the future. Does anyone who's coming out tonight want to have a chance to comment? And just tell, me, tell us your name and your address, okay? I'm Maria Karras, 400 Washington Street. I just moved to Pembroke. Um, I'm very concerned because all of that, especially that building in the far is my backyard, pretty much. So uh, when I received the letter from the previous one of the forward to me, um, I did my research on mulch. I didn't think much about the anything else, but mulch was a concern for one fire safe and fire hazard. I know that um, there's a lot of documents out there saying that it's one of the number one cause and if it knows a fire, especially with tenants that you cannot control, how would that impact my home, which is right there. Um, to unfortunately, we live in a very noisy street and when the, the resident back there said about noise, I really can't sleep with the cars on 53. 
they're going 40, 50 miles. So adding to the back, then I'll probably have to move to my sister's house um, with the noise. And so fire, rodents, um, mulch, I know that for the little that I know, and I'm not an expert, but I'm doing my research to, start to see what I'm we're getting ourselves into. I know that it causes a lot of rot and stew, and I wouldn't want, nobody will want that in the backyard. And again, now that I know that it will be possible tenants that you can never control <coughs> what they do or how it's going to turn out to be. So, yeah, I'm very concerned. <coughs> Yeah, she's right. There, there are an inordinate amount of trucks going in and out of that area already, blocking off the road. Sometimes you can't even get out of the driveway. Um, to add more trucks just right up the road, a bit, just beyond that levee, is going to create a fiasco. We've already had a few accidents. Yeah. From trucks. <clears throat> they block off the road. I sit there for 10 minutes. I can't get in my own driveway. I gotta break the law and drive up the middle of the street to get home. Where are those trucks going into? Washington. No, no, no. But are they going into uh, Gardner's Choice or are they going into uh, Loman Place? Yeah. Yeah. Loman Place. Yeah. Yeah. Something we looked at before. We tried to clear that one up a year. That's ago. never been cleared. Yeah. Up. It's not been. Nope. Never. Because we've gone out and with some other issues <coughs> with the, with. The, we did an inspection of that side. They opened up the opening of the uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So and they're far. still blocking the road. And they're still blocking the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one we need to revisit separately. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you it's to do so. It's a daily experience. Is that 416? Not 416. I'm sorry, what address was that again? 416 Washington Street. 416. There's no issue with the gardener's choice because he's got a horseshoe that pulls right. around, so right. pull in and out. Yeah, we, we have gone and, and we've done the site plan. Mm -hmm. um, you can, so you can that see it the, on the Google plan. So There's that the trucks could go area. in and turn around. And we had actually designed it so the trucks could turn around mm -hmm. because that was a concern. But you're saying they're still not going in and turning around, they're just parking in the street. We're talking about the rooming place. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that, stopping that traffic though, backing be, in. That entrance would be separated from his entrance mm -hmm. by 1,500 feet or more. More, more yeah. It's still more trucks. Plus a stoplight in between. Still Washington more Street. trucks in and more noise. Hopefully a fire station to come. And what, were you aware of a fire station potentially being built across from the, your property? <laughs> so, the, so just to sort of, there is a proposal. The town has purchased the property that's at the corner of Barker Street and Route 53. The, the land that's a mess there on the corner, the town has purchased that in the hopes of getting funding to build a fire station. And we're perfectly fine with that. We're perfectly fine. I'm, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we come back to you, yeah, um, you I'm wanted to quarrel with Washington Street, my property directly, but well, part of Dan's property. Um, I know it's operation. It's a first class operation. I think he'll um, he'll improve that property there, and um, I, I think it's good for the town and good for his business that he's relocating there. That's basically what I would say too, but I'm the neighbor. And I've never had a problem with his trucks being in the way, causing messes in the streets, parking on the side of the roads like they're doing on 53. They're not that kind of people. Um, I, I do have one more question, and that is that um, when you talked about the hours of operation, would you really be starting grinding at 7 in the morning? Um, we, we wouldn't have to start that early grinding probably not we we as a company start at seven currently um, if we're working far away sometimes we may have to leave earlier but but on site we, we probably wouldn't have to start gr grinding at seven and, and the other thing I was thinking is the grinding on the, on the weekends is that you know if you 
I could see sales or operations on the weekend, but I, I wonder about grinding on the weekends because that tends to be when people are outside. Right, right. And no, you're going to get a lot more yeah. complaints if people are outside on a weekend than right. if you're doing it during the week when everybody's at work. Right, right. Yeah, it's kind of in the, the design, like we were hoping to leave some of the existing material that's in the buffer zone. Yeah. And right. so the berm, yeah, the leave for, and that's kind of why we put the material storage where we did to create like a, a sound barrier, you know, with the material. For Pleasant Street. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But what about for the people on like Washington Street in that area? Yeah, it's it's you know how, how so the grinders are? set back in this area here. <coughs> um, oh, she's right there. Yeah, she's over here. So she this is so six hundred feet. Is, is this, and we're leaving a hundred foot, no, less than a hundred foot uh, natural tree strip here, and, and she's got some as well. Um, so it's set back. Um, we kind of took that into consideration in positioning the buildings too. I mean, they're a big, a big buffer. Yeah. Are they going to be metal or are they going to be wood? They're going to be metal, yeah. Um, so, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to bring that to, to somebody, before we do that, I also wanted to let everyone know um, we should give you guys a copy of this letter. We received a rather lengthy letter from Paul Rizal, uh 54 Fieldstone Drive in Pembroke. He raised a number of concerns. He had asked that we read the comments aloud during the public hearing and enter them into the record. It's a um, four or five page document. We just don't have the time tonight to read it into the public record. We can make it available for any members of the public that want to see it. We'll make it available to the applicant. And Matthew, I would ask, um, can someone make a motion that we append this letter to the minutes of the meeting as an ongoing record of, of uh, public comments that we'll receive? Make a motion that we append to these the letter of Paul Boisel into the minutes. Attach them to the minutes. Attach them to the minutes. It's part of the public record. Okay. Can we get a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? No. Okay. Um, so with that said, obviously we have more work to do here. Um, I see that we have our deputy chief. Um, you do. Is there anything you wanted to say about the fire issues that were raised? If anybody had any questions raised that they had a fire concern, that's why I'm here. I didn't hear one other than the cause of fires that mulch you know, tend to create, which they do, if not properly taken care of. Um, or fully disposed cigarettes or things like that. If they turn their pile, they're going to have a yard hydrant. They're going to have things for in there to control that. Uh, I don't see that being an issue. The issue that was at that lot prior was it was left in big piles and never turned and never taken care of, and that's why the fire got that deep. But if the piles are taken out and turned over and removed, they have a yard hydrant in there, there should never be an issue like that. Um, so we we'll need to continue this hearing and continue the conversation. Everyone is invited to come back. Matthew, do you have a proposal or Dan? I guess, uh, a, couple, one, a couple more, just so that we can just throw it on the record. So yep. you know, if I can't make the next one, we do have a pump. You're going to do some refueling of trucks. Yeah. That's on the plans. Well, in hopes. In hopes. Okay, in hopes. In hopes. <laughs> We're concerned about that. That's okay under. Massachusetts state law, same iron one, um, for refueling. As long as he abides by all of those CMRs, uh, he'd be fine with that. It requires um, vehicle protection, distances from property lines, which is all within that CMR, which we would make sure you know he followed all of those. The site itself falls under CMR 31, which is forest product here, which has some stipulations to it. The buildings themselves fall under CMI 13 and 148, which is 26G, which is sprinkled. So those were all things that we would follow through with you on. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the way that site plan is set up now, everything on there in the fire aspect is okay, which is covered under the law. What's uh, CMI? Uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts regulations. 
We have adopted a new regulation. We used to be 527 CMR, which okay. was the fire pot, and we've now adopted the NFPA, which is now CMR1. Okay. Thank you. Are there any chemicals, chemical store in that place? No. Nothing to treat the different mulch for colors? It's a, that's a rust product. It's a rust product? So it's, it's not a chemical base. What do you mean it's a rust product? It's, it's product. irons. It's, it's made of the colors from mulch. It's made up of irons. So it's uh, from the metal. Right, right. It's, uh, it's from it's the stone. earth. It's, so, it's so, so can I make a motion to be continued? So it's inorganic. I think it would have to be the 22nd, really. Why do we are we filling the eighth? The eighth is getting filled up. Yeah, I mean it's it's already full pretty much to to um, to eight <coughs> to eight forty five already, and there right, may be more things coming as well. Mm -hmm. So I I definitely recommend the twenty second. What time? Um, okay, I'm I guess on the fifteenth. That's um, Martin. Martin. But why? Is there a big rush here? Oh, this is it. Mm. Why? Maybe they want to pass. Maybe they want to get started. Would be very helpful, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's a week. Uh, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's a week, but we're giving. We're already kicking it for two, right? Four. Four weeks. So I'm not quite a glutton for punishment as you have it. I don't know why we have to meet like three weeks in a row or something. The eighth, well, the eighth, I mean, twenty second. Well, why do they throw the twenty ninth in there while no, we're at it? No, you can't. You have to do the six days. But <coughs> then it happens. All right, that's fine. I was just curious. Thank you. So make a motion. So for, I'm sorry. Um, say it would be uh, eight o'clock on the twenty second. All right, I'll make a motion to the continuing public hearing till January. 22nd, 8 p.m. of 2018. We have a second? Zach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so Thank you. for the members of the public who came out tonight, if there's anything else, you can always submit something in writing to us. But otherwise, you can come back on the 22nd of January and do a continuation of the discussion of the site plan where, where is and this proposed hmm? use of the on the 22nd, we distribute the letter that you referred to earlier so that each one of these people who are together can Thank you. Matthew, could you make copies of this letter for other members of the club? Or if somebody could even get it from Matthew, you have a chance to get it. You can read it. I have a source to know. I'm going to draw the account. All right. Right back at you. What's that? Of course. That's what I signed up for when I went to college, right? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. You have a degree in yeah. <laughs> you needed one of all those things. Hey, I'm Mike. I am a leader on the Christmas Eve. Okay. I'm going to take this. Okay. And you'll have a backlog then. I'm going to, you know, as soon as I get it done, I'll give it to you. And just, you know, when you have it, I need to work on it. Yeah. Thank you. 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 It's like I was saying, I'm close. I've, I've basically right there. So we have a question. I mean, I'm going to resolve this after the first one. We want to bring up the fact of the five members. We can just go back. Oh, is there any additional questions? Matt, you have a provision of NGLs that I was not aware of. That when we do a special permit, Okay, we were supposed to have five. Yeah. 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 Y
we're going to be working on doing that. I miss hearing from you, so we don't really have a chance to review our events. One thing I would like to bring up real quickly <laughs> yeah, okay. Sounds good. is that um, we have been asked by the Board of Selectmen to see if someone wants to be on the Center um, Community Center Study Committee. Um, there was some discussion um, of a proposed private public partnership and some initial study that's been done with regard to the uh, private public partnership to rebuild where the community center is. Yeah, and exactly. Asking that the planning board have a um, member on that committee to express our views of whether how that fits within the Does anyone want to be on the committee? So just to I'm sorry, just to add at the bottom of your folder is the last thing your photo is actually is the um, a memo from, it might be from Sabrina, but basically from the that uh, community center task force or whatever they call it, study committee, uh, as well as the actual image of sort of the, the sort of the tentative site plan that they sent, which as they emphasize is not set in stone. Um, just a starting point. But anyway, they've started to think about it. Um, uh, if it's too hot in there, by the way, can open the window a crack because I feel like it's like, is that okay for everyone? Okay. So, does anyone want to volunteer to be on the community center committee? No, no, no. Do you want to sit on it, Brian? See what's going on? As well. Somebody's got to be there. All right. I point. I nominate Brian to be our appointee. Second, second, third. All in favor? Why here? Four. I just need four votes. You got it. You got it. You All right. Four. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Brian will let us know what's going on with that committee, which is good because he has some history about other plans that have been out there for the Senate. Yes. Oh, sorry. Just to add to that on. On January 8th, uh, Andrew Sullivan, who's the chair of that committee, is actually going to come. He's on the agenda to come talk, give you guys a brief introduction to the, what they're thinking about and get your feedback and so forth. <coughs> so, we'll get a chance to talk about <laughs> private public. Um, okay, so before we go back to our review, our routine matters, we will go ahead with our um, our continuation of two public hearings that are running concurrently for the granting of a special permit and for approval of architectural style appearance for the pros completion of the existing mixed use project at 204 Center Street with new construction consisting of 8,800 8, square foot commercial building and 10,450 square foot commercial building. And this, this public hearing is continued from December 4th, 2017. All right, so we're in our continued meeting. Do we have the applicant, maybe? Can we make some room for the applicant and his counsel to come forward? Perhaps we should have found a bigger meeting room tonight. It's nice and cozy in here. It seems bigger than it is. Oh, oh, yeah. Good. So, who do we have here for the. Matthew, you're sending a paper around to get yeah, names. Yeah, yeah, okay. um, And who do we have here? I am Rick Grady from Grady Consulting. We also have Kevin Sealand and Matt Basie and Bob Gell. 
uh, after we met with the board a couple of weeks ago, uh, we made some revisions to the plan, uh, minor revisions to the plan. Uh, we got in touch with the fire department and we ran some turning templates around the proposed buildings, made a couple of minor modifications to the width, made it slightly wider, and increased the amount of pavement at these turns so he can make the maneuver uh, with his fire trucks around both of the buildings. Uh, we added proposed lighting to the plan, along with lighting details. Uh, as part of that, we're proposing to replace the existing light uh, that's located up near the residences. Following the meeting, I did take a ride out there. I think the wrong bulb is in that fixture. It's certainly a glaring fixture. Um, so we're going to replace it with uh, lighting that complies with today's uh, bylaw for lighting. Uh, we included a photometric plan along with a cut of the lighting. So it's, it's going to be a similar style fixture, but it's actually going to be a down light to comply uh, with the uh, requirements. So this is the fixture here that's proposed. Uh, we added erosion control, uh, revising that to a silk sock and extending that up the northerly property line as requested. Uh, I did notice in Peter's comments today, I, I missed the request to also put it along the existing site drives. Um, we have no problem adding that to the plan. Uh, we did propose a fence between the residences and the commercial. Uh, that was a comment that we heard at the last hearing, so uh, we wanted to accommodate the residences with that proposed fence. Uh, there was also a question that came up as far as an existing irrigation well that we did ask the plan as well. We'll see it in approximately this area here. Uh, that will be retained as far as this construction. Uh, Mr. Seelan contacted uh, Libby Bates at the Historical Commission to talk about the stone foundation there. Uh, I was informed that uh, basically she'd like the stones, so he agreed to let her have the stones. Um, Where would you have those to? <laughs> uh, friends, friends meeting house, is that what you said? Do you have it in writing? No, no. I well, I'd really like to see it in writing, please. You, you, you get a chance to you come in at the stones? stones? She'd like to save the stones to use them on a project they're doing at the friends meeting house. Is that just her opinion or is that the yeah. board opinion? Mm -hmm. uh, just her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, she didn't have time to talk to the board. Okay. Don't rush to remove the stones, please. And unless Kevin has anything else to add, well, the signs. I, okay. That, some of the residents mentioned some signs that picked up some samples. <coughs> The idea, I guess, is to keep any of the commercial vehicles from getting up into that uh, parking area and getting right. tangled up in there and have to turn around. And yeah, not just trucks, I mean, just people in general right. coming onto right. the site that they are not att not attracted to go further up into the drive than need to. Uh, because all they're going to do is turn around and that parking area. I bet the neighbors they would get upset about a lot of people just coming in the drive really turning around essentially. Typically in this situation this is the one that we see yeah, most drive. frequently. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yep. drive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One of them mentions trucks too. Mm. What is the anticipated you know, commercial truck activity onto this thing? Kevin. Well, during construction, of course, you know, they'd be quite a bit moving dirt and bulldozers and that type of thing. But after it's built uh, yeah. and during construction of the houses, the buildings, I mean, you know, there's going to be lumber trucks and concrete trucks. And no, I'm not concerned about construction. You're talking I about mean, post construction? Yeah, I'm talking post construction. Yeah, deliveries, you know, typical two wheel, two car, two man, two wheel car delivery type things. Uh, Use the yeah. aesthetics, that type of thing. Yeah, that kind of thing. We don't know, again, who the end. Uh, users are going to be, right. but you know we figure typical what you see around town. Maybe you a little posted any? store, like a UPS store or a FedEx store. Or mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any lo big loading areas here? No, we don't anticipate that. The spaces aren't really big enough. 
Okay. Um, the, you know, this base is the Attendalisa. Relatively small. Thinking modern pod type shops. You know. Um, I have some questions regarding the plan study <coughs> about that internal traffic flow thing. Um, should it be almost like a uh, one way in here to get around the building so you, uh, you know, not having the possibilities of, and again, through signage uh, and or paint markings or whatever, uh, you know, bringing the flow in but making it all actually back up that way without having a yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to doing that, say, at this point here. Mm, that's so what I'm just about, here basically. and right here. Just so you're not encouraging people to kind of go in there in right. the wrong direction, shall we say. At the same time, I don't want to make oh, the right. whole aisle one right. way. No, I want these people the to continue to come out. Come out, right. right. Before, yeah, that right. I agree with 100%. It's more than um, yeah, so we could do bringing flow into this turnaround area because I like the idea that you widen it. Number one, mm -hmm. I, mean, I would uh, suggest probably it might be something that we also encourage the internal traffic flow to circulate a lot around the building once they're in here. Yeah, so we could do like a one way yeah. do not enter here. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm referring yeah. to. Kind of mirror image of that over on this side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other thing is, I noticed on this proposal too, and I, I guess it wasn't required under the initial plan, is that there is no proposed sidewalk on the right side of the entrance area, and there is sidewalk on the left side. Right. Yeah. If you turn sidewalk in, strip. If you go in a few sheets deeper, you'll find the original plans there. Right. Yeah. It's, um, we did make a change. There's a file, there's a letter in the file. We asked the ZBA to take a look at pulling the sidewalk right up against the granite curb. Yeah. Versus the grass strip that. in between? No grass strip. Right. Just right. straight sidewalk. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and, that's, side and that's what's approved there? Yep. Correct. Yep. When you come out to the transition at the top of the drive to the street itself, what's the proposed material that you're going to use on the radius here? I see you've left that. It appears to be a handicap ramp. Yeah, I think we're yeah. going to rework that sidewalk and do a handicap ramp with granite curving. Yeah. Um, and we'll do the tactile strip. Yeah, so you'll, you'll prepare it at least if the town ever proceeds with Route 36 improvements that we can yeah, tie into that. that. Right. Yeah. Now, go back to the right side. Do you think? Uh, it would be helpful to have that same sidewalk display on that side of the road um, for safety purposes. Yeah, I mean, we will be generating. Yeah, it's, it's probably not a bad idea with the commercial buildings. I mean, the residents can speak to how much sidewalk gets used now, but perhaps probably not much. Um, but if there's more traffic, people right. are going to want and they're walking, they yeah. could be straight out the road. They've gone to the stop and shop and actually walk there and want to kind of come home. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. But I mean, it would balance it and it gives you the opportunity there to duplicate what's on the other side at the radius. Sure. Uh, I can see a day and falls on the DPW where we will be making improvements. Well, it's already 75%. So. Yeah. Oh, you're at the 75% plan? We're getting there. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And there will be improvements on this stretch of <coughs> Center Street. So yeah. it just uh, will help link the whole thing. Did I get a peek at that plan? Who's got that in BW? What's that? The 75% plan? Uh, yeah, you can talk to Jim. Uh, so it. I'll get a hold of him and see how we might be able to tie a sidewalk in there. I mean, part of the goal here originally of the Senior Protection District was to have sort of a more walkable Absolutely. Um, business district in the center <coughs> of the town that people could have little shops or professional offices or things to walk through walk to and walk to the town center from. So the sidewalks are kind of key to that long range yeah. All the sidewalks you see being put in now were planned ten years ago but but they finally came to fruition. Mm -hmm. And yeah that, that improves the transportation in the center, definitely. 
Well, and walkability scores are also... I mean, one of the hopes would be that for the people who own condominiums in that complex mm -hmm. is that walkability and accessibility scores are part of what people are looking at now mm -hmm. when they look at the value of property. That if it's walkable to a center, if it's walkable to the post office, it's walkable to maybe some restaurants or something down the road, that that becomes a value proposition. Mm -hmm. Plus the new construction will draw the opposite direction, too. We're hoping we get draw from the center, people, mm -hmm. maybe go to the bank and say, geez, I'll walk over and mm -hmm. get something at one of these uh, retail stores. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you need the uh, lights to work, but then so you can cross the street before anyone's going to walk it. Uh -huh. Oh, you mean the light right there by the fire station? <laughs> so you can cross the street. Yeah, you have to talk to the lights and talk about that. Yeah. Why is it off right now? They shut them off. They shut them off. The, the uh, pedestrian crossing? What? They got them right now is uh, Lincoln. So. No, those, yeah. those, those were there for traffic control, not pedestrian yeah. access and crossing. Yeah, there should have been. There is. You can call and hit a button. It uh, doesn't change it. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. That's <laughs> what you're referring to. Right? <laughs> it's all. Right. They're bringing up the sidewalk. It's off. But the DPW. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're in a different meeting here. You're on notice. You're on notice. You're going to go to your meeting. You're going to go to your meeting. Mr. Mr. Whitman serves on the DPW um, right. board as well as the planning board, so when we have a DPW is, issue, we harass them. Just right. to sort of it's, it's, it's not an inside it's not joke here. Um, okay, so any other questions from the board about the changes that have been made? I wasn't at the last meeting because of the I, I would also comment on the entranceway that there is a street light effect on the south corner. You got that light pole. Yes. Okay. Now you referenced the light back in this area that you thought it had probably like the high density LED type lighting on it or something that throwing too much Mercury splash. Layer. Is that it's it? Vapor. Yeah. Uh, well this one up front isn't helping either. Mm -mm. At least if the neighbor was still around. Oh, that was across the street. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it sounds flashing in the window or shining. Both of them are. Both of them. Uh, yeah, the one on the street's a cold, what we call a cobra head. That's a, you know, a, a national grid line. I, I, think, I think we're going to oh, have to modify that to so that it, it, oh, it does not belong. No, in. that's a national grid light. Ah. So we have no control. It's a, you know, one of those street light. lighted. It's a street light. Yeah, street light. Cold, we call them cold. But does it belong to the National Grid? Yeah, National The town rents it. Mm -hmm. Town pays for it. Yeah. Good. Good. Shut it off. It's laughing. Down the hall. Down the hall. Save your money. Shut it off. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to yeah. save you a headache. Yeah. 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 That's good for you. Electric company ownership, though. So as Rick explained, the new street lights have like a shield that will direct the light down. We won't get that. Well, it's once once you sideways you're going to put some lights in the, on that, correct, in the front. Yep. yep. So the then then it'll be illuminated your entrance, and therefore the town could shut that that off and still create a safe access to your property. Whereas right now that's probably there for traffic. I mean, I know a lot around town a lot of lights have been shut off and removed and cut the budget. So uh, I don't think I think the town would be happy to get it, get rid of it. And reduce the bill. Turn that one off and turn the one on at Mountain Avenue High Street. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's down soon, so all right. These selectmen are going to have a lot of calls, I hear. Right. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, any other comments um, from the public? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned that this was. All right, name? introduce your name Charles and the address. Charles McCarthy, 199 Center Street. Okay. Directly right across the street. You mentioned that this was a continuation of the project. No, yes. Yes, you mentioned that it was a continuation of the project. So does that mean the initial approvals from 2005 are still in play? That's what we've been advised yes. by town council. Because according to the last paragraph of those approvals, they expired in two years unless they fired for an extension, which they did not do. So the way the law reads is that if there has been, let me get my counsel's letter yeah. so that I use the right language. No, I think Bob just suggested it was a if, if the rights were substantially exercised. Right. 
Yeah, but I'm trying to go to Joel Bart. Yep. Memo. Um, so, if they had not made substantial use of the site plan, then it would have expired. They made substantial use by constructing the condominiums, which was part of a single site plan. So, uh, we've been advised by town council that that means that it has not expired. Because once you make substantial use, you're allowed to keep continuing unless there's more specificity with regard to the phasing of the project and the deadlines for the phasing of the project. And this goes on forever? So, I think that we would probably, as part of this process, be looking to impose some tighter or firmer deadlines, right? Completion. If, if for completion of the site plan to get it. Well, while you're talking about completion, in that approval there was also, they were supposed to submit a timeline for completion of the project, which was never submitted. They were also supposed to put money in a bank account for repairing the sidewalks, which apparently was never done. Okay. Well, those would have been conditions imposed by the zoning board. Right. So if they didn't enforce their own conditions, shame on them. But it doesn't necessarily negate the site plan. Um, it's yeah. what we've been advised. If they didn't impose those conditions, you can see that that account was, in fact, uh, oh, didn't had the financial that. support it was uh, expected to have, et cetera, <coughs> so those conclusions could be made. Shame on the Zoning Board of Appeals. I mean, honestly, that should have been done as part of the building permit well, process. It's right in here. On yeah. the condominiums. I, it's right in here. We've read it. No, I know, but what should have happened is when they go to issue... Sure. What? I mean, how does that... That's the Zoning Board of Appeals now. When this we have a lot of unenforced lot. violations in I town. see. <laughs> if you went around every residential neighborhood and really took the zoning bylaws and took the zoning opinions out there, you would see a lot of violations. Um, it doesn't necessarily change the legal import of the site plan. Um, so when, when this initially got brought up to us, that was our first thought was it's been more than two years without an extension. <coughs> Is this site, or we started from scratch. And that's why we reached out to town council because we ourselves questioned that, that issue as a board. and. Yeah, we reached out to town council and got opinion of council. The question you just asked is the central question of this whole process going forward. Where we are tonight. And we sought legal opinion from town council to do so. Mr. Galvin, the, attorney, or the client's attorney, happens to be town council for other towns in the Commonwealth Bars, both Marshfield and Nola. Four towns. Four now. So he's pretty well versed in municipal <coughs> law. And his opinion offered to this board was also the same as confirmed with the uh, attorney for the town of Pembroke. So the, so the well, people, the people being here have no, there's no problem, no reason for us to be here because you're going to approve it anyways. We're by law required essentially to sign approval process really for, for, for the purpose of their continued building purposes. But Anything was required under the Center Protection District. Now we have a sort of a revised program, obviously a revised proposal. And yeah, it can come to us at least to be reviewed for those purposes. But we don't have a bullet in this holster that says, see you later, Mr. Seelan, we'll take your project down the road for us. But I thought we had already voted out uh, dual use. And the yes, only project that was allowed to continue. Was though, December 30th. Yeah, but this one, this one right. pre-existed. We but at that time, when we were talking about it, they said the only one that they were going to continue was well, was 220. 220 Center Street because he had already filed, and this was never mentioned. Mm -hmm. No, we, were we at did. The meetings. At, at, at the, the at 220 the, Center Street, we filed well within the right. And that was the only one that was allowed to continue. This this project was never mentioned no, as far as being allowed to. We continue. have a consultant with such attorneys about existing developments and how that could be affected on the on the ground as to what was approved previously. That question was not raised and answered sufficiently until this proposal came forward. And then we try to see what our as a board our rights were under this process. So the I mean you're certainly 
free to obtain your own counsel to, to look at this and see if you want to challenge the decision of, of, I mean, it's not really our issue. I mean, if you guys want to bring it up with Mr. Seelan, that's not our, our um, you know, that's exercise any, any legal right you have. But this is what we've been advised by town council in terms of our ability to spend town money to, um, to uh, disallow this project. The um, I kind of think you have to look at this project as it's going to go forward. All right, there's no doubt about that. The question is, are there improvements that can be made well, I think if to the to the to the original to the original site plan okay, that we can make here. that we can make? It's going to go forward. I mean, legal counsel's already said it has it has rights to continue. All right, so now we're going to make improvements that we see that need to be done prior to the construction and the <coughs> completion of that site. And basically the only reason that the condos have have rights there is because of this particular law. Uh, so uh, honestly, the, the, the condo and the commercial were designed to go together. When we when we changed the the got rid of the mixed use, there was a provision in the modification to the bylaw that said anybody could make application for mixed use, provided that the application process could be completed prior to December thirty first of this year. So we when we did the public hearings there was a lot of concern when we were proposing to get rid of mixed use, that people had already invested sums of money in projects that were kind of out there on the table. And we said, OK, this will be only applicable after December 31st, 2017. So it was it was passed a town meeting with a kind of a grace period to give people a chance to e either um, <coughs> shut up or, or put up. Right. So now when you said, um, I'm sorry, your name? I have Deborah McCarthy. I live across the street at what 199 is? Center Street. And you were saying there was something. Why can't they still abide by what's here? I think that's my big issue. Is so what do you find that is not being right, abided they, by? Are they going to fix the sidewalks? It says right on in here, along Center Street, that they were going to fix those sidewalks. And I went to these meetings prior to them even kind of tree down over there. Mm -hmm. And, I'm, you know, that was one of the things we went over. It was like, those sidewalks are horrendous. You walk down them we, at an angle. We, we can look at that right now. That's part of making this. That's why right, that's why All this, I want to do is to this. live by what was here. And, and what they agreed they, to. And they, they haven't. Well, can I go here for a second? Yeah. Um, what you have says that the center street sidewalks would be improved by yes. the developer. Yes. And it, it's now, is that under the control of the state, the sidewalk? Because it's a sidewalk abutting the Route 36. Bob, you might know. You've had some interesting cases. You know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a route place, place, right? I think we call it. <laughs> if it's within the way of the state highway, it's solely It's not a state highway. Is it under a state numbered route, though? It's yeah, a route, but, but, it's, but I think we plow it. I, I think we maintain it. Isn't it? Doesn't no. I think you do plow it. Yeah, we maintain you it. You maintain the sidewalk? It's a state right. numbered route. It's one route where right. they just yeah. built the state funded sidewalk. Yes, here's the thing. We still we, have to maintain the sidewalk. We submitted the town submitted or created or paid for the design of Route 14. Just like right now, we're paying for the design of Route 36. We're getting state and federal money to build it. Yep. Once we do the design, they have control of the of the project. Right. We have no it's control over after, the building. After they when they build it, but it's our road. It's after, a town road. And when it's done, it's our road Correct. to maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. the sidewalks. So there will be sidewalks. I know there'll be sidewalks right. in yeah. constant. Who's obliged to pay for the improvement to that sidewalk? Could the zoning board have enforced the developer to make an improvement to a state? It's not a state. A number town road. Town. Yeah, they can make improvement on their, yes, in the front of their property. Right, because he hasn't built the front. That's a concern. I mean, no, he hasn't built the front, and therefore, you know, I mean, realistically, he hasn't stripped the trees out of there. I mean, I've done damage to the front. Yeah, but and therefore, you know, it's not a state road. Yeah, 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 it's not a state road. But this board here can, can say we want improvement to the end of your property line, each direction. 
And how will that affect the state project where we're well, he, there? Uh, Mr. Salem asked me if who had the 75 percent design. Okay. And Gene Foreman downstairs can supply that to the developer. Okay. And so you can see the setbacks if we're widening the, the road to the layout, uh, what, what that proposed design is. But yeah, he should have that downstairs, what's proposed. Because that is approved. my concern. Is it it's not approved yet. We can plug it to 100%. If that sidewalk gets moved, we're going to be throwing a lot of money well, down the drain somewhere. Well, the developer will be putting money in there. To, mind you, it took 14 years to get the, the money to take and do Route 14 mm -hmm. from full design, 75% uh, design. We don't know how long it's going to take to get the state of federal money to do 36 from the center to 27. So improvements to the sidewalk now is fine. That could be taken out and redone on that project. I don't think of it as a waste of money if no one gets hurt making a safe passage to the center on a sidewalk. Okay. Then, do you have the documents? That's why I'm just looking because specifies the sidewalk mm -hmm. and one the right over the 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 not just one. So I see the number something too, but um, it might be on the plan. state that he's the reason not uh, this project's the reason why I went to the town hall downtown meeting to vote out mixed use. Because I feel that we were totally oh. taken advantage of. I'm sorry, what do you mean taken advantage of? Well, you know, he took he, he built the condo, took the condos, money and left. And, and now all of a sudden the thing's gonna get get squashed and at December 31st and he's back here trying to get it started again and he doesn't have them rented as far as I'm concerned I, as far as I know there's nobody renting these right which is another thing that I want to make sure that he can't turn these into condos if he doesn't rent them oh no they're business they're, design they're, they're business provided, provided with the layouts of the building and all that sort of thing. I mean I, I'm surprised I, I'm uh, can I just uh, bring up another thing? Is that it said during construction, which obviously it's still under construction, there's supposed to be a sign posted, mixed use for anybody that purchases a, purchase a house after. Right. <clears throat> so no we sign. know that it's mixed use because when we were here the last meeting, there was a few people that lived there that had no idea about it's, 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 it's in, in, all, it's in yeah. all of their titles. The so special permit is recorded. It's yeah. impossible. I mean, so that, usually, that, when when, when someone buys a condominium, huh? their their bank's attorney is supposed to pull a title examination, mm -hmm. and that title examination they should be pulling plans of the property, mm -hmm. and the plans of the property would show it, it's all one lot. That it's all one lot, right? Right. These are residential lot. condominiums in a mixed use project. So we have to sign. Does the condominium association take over the building? What happens? It says there's supposed to be a sign. Buy the place. I know, but I'm saying there's supposed to be a sign posted on the property. It came down within two years. It never went back up. And there's still, there's still the signs there. There's a sale sign, though. There's a sale sign. 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 There's a sale that was a temporary sign that they allowed us to, the building inspector granted a, a permit for. Yeah. After a while, it came down. I don't see it. We can't, you can't ensure that months. after something's already been open a few years or whatever, that that legal process, when somebody buys property, somehow the person didn't get the buyer, didn't become aware that they were buying into this situation. I find that well, amazing. It's not the project's anyways. not completed. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, so I can see it getting lost if it was all done. I guess my my question too is that as someone who lives across the street, is um, this was a project that was originally thought to be a good thing to have the mix of residential and commercial. Mm -hmm. So, so is it still a good thing to have? A walking business district in the middle of town. Well, mm -hmm. Ask the people who live here. Who mm -hmm. Live there. Mm -hmm. They're all here. Well, but, but <laughs> part, of, part of part of the that thing is expiring December thirty first right. when it comes to residential mixed with business moving forward. You will have a solid leg to stand on on January one. But don't forget, if this application is done in a timely fashion, if you will, 
and he's before the board at this point, and we've sought out legal opinion as to the rights of the builder or developer in this case. How are we supposed to get on this? You leave me in a legal dilemma here. I'm just kind of scratching my head. I know you have a history on the project. We've worked on the committee yes. 10 years ago. Yeah. Mother, mother on one side. But, you know, we've been down the road. And I certainly was surprised when we found out that this development was going to come forward. And if I really thought there was a reason or a legal leg to stand on that may force that development to cease where it was, I would have taken it or tried to convince this board, as you would, to restrict this development further. 